Good afternoon folks. Today's topic, we're going to answer a couple of forum questions as I go along because they'll relate to the project. It's a deal that I talked about in one of the forums, uh, I'm making a beer holder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to skip the long intro like I always say, we'll get right to it. I got horseshoes, I have railroad spikes, and I have some flat sheet metal. Now, I want to bake a base for the beer can to set onto, and I'll use a horseshoe as a holder. So I'm going to pan down here in a minute and I'm going to show you the sheet metal. Now you can use a jigsaw and just go like this and cut out with a metal blade the shape of that horseshoe and then we're going to weld it to the bottom of a horseshoe to create the base. I have a plasma cutter so what you're going to see in a minute is me using my plasma cutter to cut the sheet metal. You can cut it by other means. If you had to, I had a neighbor that actually used a cutoff blade and cut it here, 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 and kind of went around it. And then when he welded it onto the base of a horseshoe and, and tack welded it, then he used a flat disc on a four and a half inch angle grinder and ground it down real smooth. You can do that too. There's more than one way to accomplish things. You don't have to own a plasma cutter. You, like I said, there are other ways, especially the jigsaw is a good way with a good metal blade on it. So you don't have one look on craigslist they're very cheap but get a decent one don't get one of these harbor freight throwaway jigsaws they just i personally don't like corded tools from harbor freight it's too easy for me between garage sales craigslist and even if i had to go buy it i want a good quality power tool that's another topic okay i'm going to pan down i'm going to show you my setup for plasma cutting out the base of this and then we'll move forward one moment Okay, before I, before I pan down, here's a horseshoe, here's a cup. See, now that fits in there pretty nice. You got a little bit of room in there, but it'll set, won't fall out. You use one of these great big ones, it's not the best, it will work, but try to find a smaller horseshoe for your base. Okay, let's start with that. I'll pan down, I'll show you the flat metal and plasma cutting. One okay, moment. Okay, set up, I got a piece of flat. Uh, sheet metal here. There's the horseshoe. I'm going to put it all the way down here close to this edge. Get a piece of soapstone. This is a little piece I've got. You can get out at Harbor Freight. You get like a bunch of them, five or six, something like that in a pack for a couple of bucks. Or you, if you got a paint pen, use that. Okay, now I outline just the top part of this and then the outside. Okay, why do I do that? Okay, because up here at the top, you can cut, you can come in some if you want to, or you can just create an arch coming over like this. Just kind of do it with your sewn. Okay, now lift it up. There's your pattern for the base of the beer holder. Now, I have a pair of darkening glasses. I got these at Air Gas. I think they sold them to me for about five bucks. I don't remember the shade, I could say four or five. I, I might be misquoting that though. Um, use your welding helmet if not, but wear something, okay? These are specific, you know, for this hypertherm, uh, well, or for any plasma cutter, but uh, I wear them. Anyway, here we go. pliers or your these are harbor freight pliers but I don't care what happens to them but then then there it is that's your base now use a jigsaw like I said if you don't have anything fancy I just I happen to have a plasma cutter but if you don't like I said use something else okay I'm gonna cool this off I'll be right back I'll show you what we'll do next okay I'm back I just ran it under cold water just so you can touch it. There's the base. I gotta put it right up here on a flat part of my welding table. I'm gonna take, now it's still real rough, 
but I don't worry about that right now. I'm going to take and I'm going to put the horseshoe and center it up on here the way you think it looks good. Remember this is the base. I'm going to set up my MIG welder. I'm going to pause this. I'll be right back as soon as I have my MIG welder set up. Okay, so I took this C-clamp and it's the one that's got the flat bottoms on it because it secures it better to the table I think than vice grips. So Harbor Freight, you get them real cheap. They work great. If I damage them too bad, I just throw them out. There's the base plate that we cut out. There's the horseshoe and I'm going to line it up right now. Now I'm going to put some tack welds on the sides and on the back. And then if you want, and I've done this before, from right here you can just weld all the way around it real quickly all the way up to here. And maybe we'll do that and I'll show you. But I mean you can tack weld it or you can do a full string weld all the way around. Give me a sec, let me get ready to MIG weld and I'll show you what I mean. All I did was tack weld it. That's it. That's all I wanted to do right now. So, let's take it off. Alright, let's take it off. And there it is, tack welded. Now, I'm going to go around this whole thing. I'm going to put a clamp. The edge here has got a gap. So now I'm going to put a clamp on here and then I'm going to weld this. And I'll show you. Now you can use your vice grips if you want to. Now I'm going to find something to prop this up at a little bit of an angle because when you MIG weld or weld at any time you should try to be as comfortable as you can. Your welds are going to come out better I think. So I spend a few minutes because we're not in production, we're not in a rush. Grab some old railroad spikes or something, I don't know. And I'll play around. Now see that'll hold it up. That's good enough and I've got my clamp on here. So you can use vice grips like I said to hold this down nice and flush to the piece of metal Just like that all right that looks pretty good so let's weld it up now I'm going to adjust my welder a little bit we'll go to town take the clamp off Rotate it around all the way around and do the same thing all the way around this thing. Okay, I welded all the way around, a big long seam all the way around this thing. Now it's hot. I'm going to take it over, drench it in water, and I'll be right back. Here's, here's the base of it. And it's all funky looking and it doesn't look good. Now this is where your angle grinder, and I'm going to pan over to the vise, comes in. So you're going to secure that in the vise and then we're going to use a flap disc. I use 40 or 60 grit. I've got angle grinders set up with both. And then I'll start to shape this and make this look nice and even all the way around. We'll do that next. One minute. Okay, I'm going to use my Makita because that's what I have set up with a 40 grit belt. My, uh, my other one, my DeWalt and my Makita, I've got both a DeWalt, a Makita, and I have a Milwaukee. I kind of favor the Milwaukee, but I have them set up with different grid discs. This one's got the 40, we're going to use it. Let's go ahead and start shaping that way. Okay, here I have it set up. There's the Milwaukee. Make sure you got your safety glasses on and let's start shaping this up. I'm going to pause the video, okay? You don't need to watch me do this because it's boring, but I'm going to go from here all the way around this whole thing and make it look nice and round or nice horseshoe shape. Nice smooth edges. I grind on both sides here and across the front and then I mold it back and forth and I keep playing with it. And visually you'll be able to see this comes has a nice contour now. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, it's a little hot from that grinding wheel, but I'm going to hold it with pliers. Let's take a look. See that edge all the way around? 
and now it comes out nice contour, nice smooth beveled, rounded, whatever you want to call it, and then I run it across the back. Now let me give you a couple of tips. The first one, when you're doing these welds, stop and look. If you have little bee holes or places where you didn't get it, just fill them in real quick with a MIG welder. This isn't structural welding, so you don't have to worry about how much you burned in. So just, just plug the holes go all the way around it. Make sure they're all plugged. Put it in your vise. The vise is the best thing. Put it in an angle where you feel comfortable with that grinder because you want to flatten down the back, the base of this, real flat. Or just knock it off even if you're making it a little contour around. This will make it sit flatter. Up here on the edge of the horseshoe, you're going to use this to bevel it like this, to come around, to make a little bull nose all the way around this thing. Okay? Okay, let's go back to the workbench and let's play around with how we're going to make this. Here we go. So remember, we're playing around, so use whatever you got. Now, I've got some cutoffs from projects on uh, these railroad spikes. I just throw them in a bucket. I've got quite a few of them, I'll probably get rid of some of them, but you can use them for practice welding, whatever. In this case, we want this next horseshoe, I want to make it set up, you know, higher. So again, I look for a small one and say, well, this one will do. It fits a beer can in there or a soap can or a pop can pretty damn good. But, you got to figure out how you're going to weld that thing, just like this probably, okay? So we're just playing around. Let's go ahead, I'm going to weld this railroad tie onto the top piece, separate. And I'll show you why, because it's easier to line up. Hold on. Now you might have to take this piece after you've tack welded it like I did here. Put it in your vise and tap it up to make it bend up some or tap it down. So don't over weld this when you first start. Okay, now this happened, I got lucky. This came out to be pretty darn level, just the way I wanted it. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the back side of this my finished welding across here, and then we'll move on. One sec. Okay, there's the weld, and this will be more than holding, okay? You don't need to worry, it's good. Okay, now we want to weld this onto here. The reason why I waited this long is because I'm going to tack this, and if I tack it where it's bent down too much, with a tack weld, a hammer, or even by hand, I can bring this up to where it's nice and level and flush. I'll use another piece of scrap steel or something, put it right like this. I'll eyeball it, I'll get it centered, we're not being exact. About right like there. Voila. Take it away, take a look at it. And like I said, you might have to put this in your vise, okay, and you might have to play around with bending it up or down. When you're done, you can see down here, I've welded it, I've welded it, but I didn't put anything across the very front. If you get sloppy, it's too hard to get in there and grind it, so just try to make your welds neat coming across both of these sides. I welded the back, the butt of this up down here, and I'm going to put some right here, and I'm going to put some, I'm sorry, up here and down here, and we're going to hit that with an angle grinder. So we're going to kind of tweak things as we go. So let me weld it real quick. Now I'm not too worried about splattering. If I was, I could use that anti-splatter that I was telling you about. I'll show it to you here real quick. I use the, the stuff from Radner. I usually, here's the tip of my gun, I just spray it and it keeps all that stuff from building up. You can also use it on metal. It'll keep it anything from sticking, so whatever you want to do. Okay, here it is so far. We got the base, we got this. We got this, the holder. So now we've got to start working on the body of this thing. Alright, 
that's okay. All right, so I got to clamp down so it doesn't move around. Bring the magnet in. We're getting it fairly close. Now I took one of these railroad spikes and I cut it. About an inch, inch and a half, something like that. I just eyeballed it. I'm going to center it over this guy's body and kind of tilt his head back just a little bit. Like that. We want room for that can now, you know. And let's see if we got it centered. About right there looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld this. Now, I'm not getting too concerned over where I put the welds. On the, I'm not going to weld the front. I'm going to weld the sides and the back. Now the back is where we can smooth it over with that four and a half inch angle grinder. So, here we go. Get rid of the magnet. Remember, this is hot, so don't touch it. Use your pliers. Let's turn it around. Let's weld the other side real quick. Now, let's lay it over. Now, I'm going to go across the back of this now. You don't have to, but like I said, I always do because I can touch it up with that four and a half and make things look pretty good. Okay, the trick here is when you're welding this stuff, fill in all your gaps. Even if you add a little extra, you're going to mold this over with that angle grinder like I said. Okay, so we're done with this at this point. We're going to set it up here, slip it around. Now, I like to put hats on mine, you know, so you, you can use a jigsaw with a metal blade in it or any means that you want. If it's thin enough, I suppose you can use metal shears of some kind, but what I do is I cut them in a teardrop. There, I cut a bunch of these a little bit ago with that plasma cutter. So we'll just take one here for the heck of it. I'm going to use that four and a half inch angle grinder and I'm going to shape this real quick. Okay, here's a shot right here of that teardrop piece of sheet metal and all I did is touch up the edges and molded it basically with that angle grinder all the way around. Um, I didn't show it, um, it's in all my previous videos, but I'll show you now what I do to make the hat look a little bit more like a hat. When you got it to this point, there's a little toy I made, it's got some pipe welded to a piece of diamond plate welded onto a piece of square stock. You can simply just take this, put it in the vise, doesn't matter how, get your pliers, grab this like this so you're holding it. You need a ball peen hammer, that works best I think. So there's one Harbor Freight Special, got it right up here. Here's the round part, the hole in the tube. That's about it. Now if you bent it too much, just flip it over, even on a hard flat surface, just tap it down. Like that. There you go. There's your cowboy hat. We're going to put a bolt on here to give him like, uh, you know, the center of the hat, and we'll put it on him. I'll show you. I'm going to pan back. Okay. <clears throat> okay, before we get to the hat, I put our little man here inside of the vise still hot so like I said use pliers. Now I'm going to use that four and a half and I'm going to clean this up. Might as well clean it up now. Makes it easier than waiting till later so. Okay we're back down. Now I'm going to weld this little hat on him. But don't put it too far this way it'll interfere with your can okay so. You're going to kind of set this thing back. And now if you do, don't worry, you can grind this with your four and a half, the brim, okay? But I got it pretty much where I want it right now. Set up. Alright, there it is. Now, don't go overboard because you got to put a bolt on there. Let's take a look at it. Say shit, you messed up, but I did. 
That's the reason why we tack weld it. I can pull it off that easy. So now I'm going to put it back on there and we're going to try it again. Now we'll take a look at it. Yep, looks pretty good that way now. Alright, let's find a bolt. I'll be right back. Okay, so you can get these bolts. 3 quarter, 5 eight, whatever you want. 3 quarters, 5 eighths. I have an assortment of them. I buy a handful of them at a time when I'm out at Lowe's or Home Depot because I use them a lot in welding projects. Put it on there. Be careful. Don't touch this. It's still hot. Just put it on there where it looks about right. Not bad. Let's weld that on there. And all you're going to do is fill that bolt hole with weld. Now I stop once in a while, let it cool down for a second, and then I do it again. This is playing around. I don't have to solidly weld it, but what I do now that I have that on there, I tilt it on its side. I go to the side, and I put another weld directly under the hat to the top of that railroad spike on each side. There's one. There's two. Now that ain't gonna go anywhere. Now you can come back up here up top and let's fill up his hat. You get close to the top, you definitely want to stop. Take a look at it. Don't go too high because you'll end up molding it, which isn't a problem with that four and a half inch angle grinder. Again, it's a very useful tool. This seems to be pretty level, pretty good little mound. It's not real steep. Doesn't look bad. Let it cool off for a minute. Look at it. If you think you need a little more, okay, here we go. Let's take a look at it. Say, so, well, you didn't come out far enough on the side. It's okay. Play around. You're not going to mess this up. You can always mold this dome anytime you want. Now that doesn't look bad. That looked pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, so so far this is what we got. Alright, let this cool down. I'm going to go run underwater. I'll be right back. Okay, folks. This is the end of the project and here's a shot of it right here. After I shot it with that primer black, I dusted it with it's like a textured uh, copper color paint. That's what I had laying around and I painted the wrench on this red as I promised on the live stream. So this is one of two of them that I'm going to make. So we'll call this, you know, Red Wrench Beer Holder 1. And I'll make another one or maybe we'll make uh, one blue or something like that. But we'll make two of them. Um, anyway, there's the drink holder. I thank you folks. Hit subscribe. If there's something that uh, you'd like to see more of or know more about, leave me a comment or tell me something else you want to see made or fabricated or something or a tool you want to be gone over that I might have. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.